Hey guys, um, I've been wanting to do this video for quite a while now. I teased about it on the Facebook page a long, uh, probably three, four months ago, what I would consider a long while ago, um, but I'm finally getting around to putting this thing together. So what I'm gonna show you right here is just my simple little DIY version, less than 50 bucks, uh, direct drive conversion on a JG Aurora. And the beauty of this thing is that it's completely reversible. There is no wires that are cut, no wires that are extended. Um, nothing is, is done in a way where, it's, where it can't be put back to its stock form. And we're actually gonna use most of the stock parts as it is, but if you went ahead and converted this and decided down the line that you wanted to sell the printer and you wanted to return it 100% to a stock configuration, you can do that and it will never look like you've ever done anything as far as modifications to it. So that's the whole reasoning behind this. The other reasoning behind this is because I love to tinker with these things and I was just looking for something to do one day. So um, I finally got it all put together and got all the details ironed out. The, uh, there are some 3D printed parts. Those STL files will be linked in the video description as well as there will be a link for, for an extension cable that I've included, which is kind of the, the bread and butter of why this is completely irreversible. Um, I mean, completely reversible, rather. Uh, that extension cable, it, you can't, for whatever reason, can't find it anywhere, but I am, I am selling them. I had, to, I had to have a large number manufactured, so I have a ton sitting around that I don't need because I only really needed one. So I'm just selling off the extras. Um, so go ahead and watch this video. Let me know what you think. Please comment. If you do enjoy it, please subscribe to the channel. Uh, share the video with everybody that you know, uh, just so that they know how big of a 3D printing dork you are. And uh, I hope to hear how your experience with this whole thing went. So uh, let me know. All right, so here we are on the back side of the of the printer. This is the JG Aurora A5S. Um, obviously, you can see that nothing about this is stock. And I only unmounted this because I was testing a few things out, but it was mounted. Uh, so obviously, you're going to have the regular standard extruder. It's going to be sitting sideways. Um, that doesn't matter because all that's going to go away. We're going to end up using a BMG extruder for this mod and I'll show you exactly how that's gonna happen. So uh, the first thing you're gonna take your, uh, take your wire loom apart and simply pull out the connector over on this end and uh, you should be left with a little coupling there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom in a little bit here and I'll show you exactly what's gonna happen on this end of the printer, uh, probably from the front side because it's a little bit easier to see and then we'll deal with everything that's happening up here, which is actually not too much. Um, this is gonna be one of the easiest mods you can make. So let me, before we get to that, let me just show you um, all the pieces that are involved. So the first little bit right here, it's a little, and all of this is 3D printed with PLA, nothing special. Um, nothing hard to print. So that's the first little piece that's going to mount our extruder to the um, print head over here. So that's going to sit right there and your extruder is going to mount to that. This will sit on the back side to hold the extruder in place with the motor. Uh, if we left it just up to this to hold the weight of all that, this would delaminate and peel off and it would do us no good. But combined with this little bracket, it all holds itself together pretty pretty nicely and I've actually tested it for quite a while so I know it does work um, and these little things right here so there is only going to be one of these required um, all this is is a threaded adapter and you'll see you'll see why we need this in just a few minutes here but this is a threaded adapter that's going to accept a Bowden coupling now this is an M6 coupling there's one for the M8 which is the the one that's on this end of the printer uh, probably the one that you're going to want to use so you can just rip that coupling out of there and pop it in this new piece and there's also one available for an M10 which is slightly larger so depending on which uh, coupling you have sitting around that's the one you're going to use and you'll see how all this goes together in just a minute here but this is basically going to sit somewhere up here 
it's going to have a short piece of Bowden tube basically to guide filaments into, um, into the area over here where it can be picked up by the extruder. But at the same time, it'll keep the uh, filament holder in place and it will allow us to mount the runout sensor as well. So uh, nothing is gonna be removed. We're not gonna lose any of the functions. And at the same time, all of this is gonna be completely reversible. Uh, this video is gonna take a little bit longer than it should take to put it all together, but um, obviously it's because I'm making a video. Once you do it and once you know what's going on, then you will obviously be able to do this in probably 10 to 15 minutes. You can convert from direct drive back to Bowden or Bowden to direct drive. So let me just reposition this camera on the front end of the printer and then you'll see what we're gonna do up there. So here we are on the front of the printer. Um, as I said, a lot of this is gonna go together pretty quickly, pretty easily. It's just that you need somebody to show you how to do it. <laughs> um, took me quite a while to actually get this right. So I thought I'd share it with you guys so that I could save you from that heartache. So what we're gonna start with is we're gonna take this piece off right here which is just two screws, one on either end. So here's what you're left with. Now, there is actually a bit of a, uh, an order to this, as far as how you're gonna take it apart and put it back together and all that. So um, if you don't do it in the right sequence because of the fact that there's a bracket on the front end of this and the extruder has to clamp onto the, um, the fitting that we're going to replace in here, it's going to be near impossible to actually get that, um, to get that extruder in there unless you mount that first and then add the little piece up front. So first things first, we're going to take this little coupling off, I already had it loosened up. Um, and this guy is gonna fit in there, but you can't just stick that in there and hope for the filament to guide itself in there because as you remember, this tube actually goes all the way down into that print head. So we have to cut ourselves a little piece of tubing. Now I actually included, um, I actually included a little tube cutting guide and this is taken from a taken and modified from a thing on Thingiverse, and I will credit the creator on that um, in, the, in the comments down here. But as you can see, all you gotta do, you push your filament, your Bowden tube in here, you're gonna push it through this end till it hits the end stop, slice right there, and you'll have the perfect length. So what we're gonna do at this point, and you'll see right here, it's all chamfered and, and done beautifully so that that fits right in there. Once that's in there, you're just gonna turn it around and screw it down into the print head. Very simple. Now, as far as your extruder goes, um, this is obviously a knockoff extruder, but uh, a BMG or BMG style will work. Now on mine, it came with this little fitting in here. So now we'll see how this works. So once we take it apart, you can see that this piece just simply slides out. Some of them are not gonna have a threaded piece, they're gonna be a little bit closer, but they'll all have that type of a barrel piece. We're gonna get rid of that altogether. And basically what you're gonna to wanna to do is sandwich the little piece that we just created into the extruder itself. Once that's done, we're just gonna kind of leave that alone for a second. And we're gonna come back over to the front end of this. So on the front end, we're basically gonna remove these two screws down here and replace it with this piece, which is all gonna line up with the extruder and it's gonna hold the motor. And there's two little screw holes on it where those two screw holes were. The only difference is, is you do need longer screws and those are gonna be um, M3 by 12 millimeter. So, Go back to our little trusty screwdriver here. Swap to the proper bit. And we'll start taking this apart. Now, do note that when you pop these screws out, this is gonna have a tendency to wanna fall. So either be ready to catch it or um, either be ready for it to fall. So 
you do it very carefully, then it'll just kind of hang out. So once you do that, you're going to take your little adapter plate here. And simply screw that into place. So you could use the um, the stock extruder motor on this printer, or you can get yourself a slim motor. We don't need all the torque of the original because we are using a gear driven, um, a reduction gear style extruder. Um, you can get one of these for eight or nine dollars on Amazon. Slimmer, lighter, and gets the job done just beautifully. So I've gone ahead and fitted it with a drive gear refer to your extruder instructions on how to fit that uh, once you have that all ready to go it's simply a matter of sliding that in place and tightening the screws on the opposite side Now you don't need to crank it down super crazy or anything like that. Um, it just needs to be, you know, snug. So we're not trying to break anything. And then go ahead and put in your little tensioner screw for the uh, for the extruder before it gets lost in, in the mess that you're creating. So once that's done, obviously we got to get wiring down to the motor. Now I've heard people say that you can just pull the wire out of the loom and then you know just plug it in right here. I didn't want to do that simply because I didn't want to start taking things apart in case I want to switch back to stock. I wanted to leave the loom intact and I wanted to do all that. So what I ended up doing is I have, and you can buy these, look in the uh, video description and there will be a link to a, a web page where I'm selling these. Um, this is a 28 inch long uh, six pin extension cable for these extruder motors and I don't know if that'll focus, but there you go. So it's just a male and a female. Now, if you're using the stock motor, then there's nothing that needs to be done to the cable or anything like that. You don't have to swap any wires around or anything. But if you are using a uh, one of these slimline cable uh, motors, depending on the motor manufacturer, like on this one, I had to swap the two center wires on one end of the cable. So. Just look at the wiring and which um, which poles are connected to which wires on the new motor that you're using. So we're just gonna, for now, plug in just this one end. And obviously we have a little bit of cleaning up to do with the wiring and all that, but we'll get to that in a few minutes. So as you can see, I got rid of the, uh, the old extruder and motor uh, just to clean up the area a little bit so you can see what's going on. First thing you're gonna wanna do, um, Take your Bowden coupling and on your little connecting block right here, make sure it screws in nice and straight. You might have to use a wrench to screw this in the first time, um, but just screw it in all the way. It doesn't have to be super tight. It just has to be screwed in. That's all it is. Um, once you have that done, you're gonna wanna take a short piece of tubing and I mean, it can literally be that short. All we're trying to do is get the tube up and over this hump right here so that when the filament is um, being fed in, it's not snagging on anything right here. So it's a pretty simple process. We'll just push that together. You'll have a little something like that. Now, two screws and two nuts are gonna hold this center to this little block. Uh, so once you have the sensor mounted to the little block right here, uh, the only thing you're gonna have to do is either snip this or slide it down a little bit. There's a little, um, little zip tie in right there. But you just wanna be able to buy yourself a little bit of space so that this wire has a little bit of slack in it. And what you're gonna do is, there's a screw hole right down here that you're gonna wanna mount this, um, this little block too. So this is the same screw that was for the uh, for the filament 
uh, extruder bracket originally. So you'll just mount this using that same screw. All right, so here we are. Those all put back together. And actually, um, really just on the fly, I decided that this would actually work out better. And what we did is we kept the entire length of the Bowden tube, but instead of having our extruder here, we just have it connected to our extruder over on this end. Now you could just keep a short length that just overhangs on this side of the frame and just cut it and have the filament hanging free. But um, this actually, I think, probably works out a little bit better. That way your filament's protected, less chance of breakage or anything like that. Uh, now, just like loading regular filament, you'd load it on this end. And uh, once it gets over to your extruder, your, uh, you, know, you release tension from the, from the wheel, push it the rest of the way. Or if need be, you might have to actually turn on your printer and have the printer uh, feed it rather than you just manually feeding it. Depends on how, you know, basically how that filament lodges itself once it gets to the extruder. Um, so that is basically it. That is a complete direct drive system. I mean, you have your extruder sitting literally right on top of the print head. You have your motor sitting right there. Um, the only difference, the only thing that you're gonna have to do differently is because this is a geared extruder, you will have to change the um, steps per millimeter on the extrusion in either the firmware, if you're using an aftermarket firmware, or you can do it in, you know, in the start G-code of your, of your slicer. I believe mine is set for something like 420 steps or something like that, but you know, you would have to do a, um, you would have to go ahead and uh, calibrate your extruder just like you would anytime you're changing extruders or if you're having issues with um, the extrusion link. Um, clearly it's hard to calibrate an extruder that's mounted, so you'd have to take it off and calibrate it, then put it back on, put it all back together. But yeah, there you go. That's that's the whole the whole shebang right there. Um, literally the, well, the only piece that's gonna be hard to get is this little cable, and that's why I'm selling them on this little website, which is, again, the link is in the description. Uh, everything else is really off the shelf. The BMG extruders, they're, they're, the originals are all over the place, or the clones are you know a dime a dozen. You can, you can pretty much find these anywhere. The motor is just a standard slim, uh, slim line motor. And everything else is pretty much reused. So we re reuse the sensor, we reuse the, the coupling here, and we reuse the, uh, the, the tubing. So once you 3D print those parts that you need, the rest of it is just collecting a few little pieces here and there, which you may or may not already have. Um, the, um, the, if I'm not mistaken, the only thing that needed support was the actual fitting in there. It does need a support between the two rings of the of the piece, but everything else can be printed without support at a 0.2 uh, millimeter layer. And there she is. Have fun with it, and uh, please let me know how it turned out for you. I would love to hear it. And also, I know this is the A5S. Um, I did want to mention this may be possible on I think the A3S or the A5. There's a few printers that use very much a, a very similar print head. And I'd like to know if, if somebody out there has one of those printers, if you can just go ahead and try try this little mod out and let me know how it works out. Till next time.